Today, we're gonna to take a look at this Next.js site and make it go from this to this. If you wanna follow along with the exact same website that I've got here, you can clone it from my GitHub. Just head over to the link in my description, then clone the starter branch to have the same setup that I've got. Now that we've got a starting point, let's take a look at the tools that we'll be using. To add our animations, we're gonna be using a package called Framer Motion. Framer lets you replace your normal JSX with motion components. For example, you'd replace a div with motion.div. These motion components take props, which make animating a component or a page super, super easy. They also provide some helper components such as animate presence, which makes it trivial to trigger animations whenever a component is removed from the screen. This is perfect for us because we want pages to animate out as well as animate in. To start with our project, head over to the pages directory and open up the underscore app.js file. It's possible that this file isn't present in your project. If so, just go ahead and make one and add the code that you see on screen now. You could also copy this from the Next.js documentation. This this underscore app component wraps every page in our application, so any code that you add to this file will render on every single route in the website, which is perfect for us because it means that we can write code for animating between pages one time and it'll wrap around every other page. First things first, we're going to import animate presence from Framer Motion, then wrap our component with it. Animate presence is able to detect when direct children are removed from the DOM, then pause react until some animation is run. We want to pass one prop to this component called exit before enter. Exit before enter being set to true will ensure that only one component is rendered at a time, thus allowing us to animate one page out before another is animated in. Next, we'll import motion from the Framer Motion library, then add a motion.div component directly under our animate presence component. The first three props that we want to pass this component are initial, animate, and exit. Each of these will be set to strings, which we can call whatever we want. These strings map to keys in an object called variance. The initial variant represents the state of the screen when a component first loads loads, the animate variant represents the state of the component after it's finished animating, and the exit variant represents the state of the component once it's finished exiting the screen. To start off, we'll just pass an opacity of 0 to our initial variant and an opacity of 1 to our animate variant. We'll add one more prop called key. This key we want to be unique for each route. Essentially, any children of the animate presence component need a unique key so that animate presence understands when which components come on and off of the DOM. For our use case, we're going to import use router from next slash router, and then the key will be equal to router.route. If we check the screen now, we should see that whenever we go between routes, the opacity is pretty quickly going from zero to one. We can slow this down a bit by passing in a prop called transition. Inside of transition, I'll pass a duration of 0.75, that means 0.75 seconds. If we take a look now, we'll see that the animation is a bit slower and smoother. To add in the swiping animation, we're gonna be using the CSS clip path property. To understand a bit more about how the clip path property works, you can head over to bennettfeely.com slash clippy and play around with this tool. I find this really useful for seeing how this works. You can kind of just drag these anchors around and it'll show you at the bottom what clip path you would need to copy and paste to make this work. In our case, we want our initial and animate variants to represent a full screen square, then animate to a square with the edges meeting in the middle of the screen like so. I'll go ahead and add this in. Again, I'm using the square clip path for the initial and animate variants, and then the cropped clip path for the exit variant. Once I've got this in, I'll go ahead and take a look at what we've got. We should now see that animating between pages results in both that swiping animation and the opacity animation. To add a final bit of polish, I want to add some animations to the explore page so that all of the elements animate in along with the page itself. To do this, just go ahead and open up the explore .js file under the pages directory. In this file, we've got a navbar hero section and these SVG mountains at the bottom here. Starting with the navbar, I'm going to replace the wrapping div with a motion.div. Because we aren't running exit animations, we don't need to worry about adding the animate presence component like we did earlier. All animations will simply run on mount. On this motion.div component, I'm going to add an initial and animate value as well as a duration of 0.75. Instead of passing strings to the variants, I will just define them in line like this. We'll start with a Y position of 25 and an opacity of 0, then transition to Y of 0 and an opacity of 1. We can take the same code and paste it down below in our hero section. I'm going to add an additional delay property of 0.2 seconds. As the name suggests, this will just delay the animation by 0.2 seconds. Do the same for the mountains component and change the delay to 0.4 seconds and we should be good. If we go ahead and swap over to the project now and navigate around a bit, we should see our finished animations. That's it for this one, guys. Like and subscribe if you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Peace.